The International Association for Near-Death Studies presents NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. Welcome to NDE Radio with Lee Whitting, whether you're listening on TalkZone, by podcast, through the archives of our ad-free shows on our YouTube channel, or connected through the incredible content of our Facebook page. In 1989, when he was only 27, Wayne Fowler had a heart attack and died. His resulting near-death experience led him through the bedroom wall to a woman who told him someone wanted to meet him. Suddenly, he found himself carried by invisible hands through a tunnel, surrounded by angels towards what he thought was a star brighter than 10,000 suns. And from that light, Wayne encountered Jesus and experienced a love, he says, that's beyond the ability of the human mind to comprehend. Wayne, welcome to NDE Radio. Thank you, Lee. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for this opportunity. Well, thank you for for, uh, reaching us all the way from Australia to do this. (laughs) (laughs) Wayne, I understand you'd only recently become interested in Christianity when your heart attack occurred. Had you been raised with any religious training as a child? Uh, no, actually, it was quite the opposite. Uh, I was raised in a family that was more involved in the occult than anything else. Uh, they they weren't Christian. Uh, they would say that they know they've heard of God, and that was about as close as it went. Um, when I grew up, or as I grew I believe that there was a God, and I desired deep in my heart. I really wanted to know about it. I wanted to know what is God. If it's a if it's a thing, what is it? If it's a person, who is it? And I really wanted to know. Uh, and so ultimately, uh, as I as I had gotten married, I, I at the same time I had gotten deep into the New Age. And uh, I was thinking that maybe I could find out something about that through that particular pathway. I was reaching a little taste here, a little thing there, and I was really searching. Uh, But it wasn't until uh, our children uh, were young and we decided that they needed to be able to have the opportunity to, to experience spiritual things themselves so that they can kind of develop that I had ultimately discovered a church, and uh, that's where it went from there. Wow. And I guess it was only about a week after you first uh, got in touch with that church, perhaps, that, well, well, tell us what happened. Well, what happened was, and and, and I'll I'll just try to just kind of encapsulate this, Uh, it was under the guise of trying to be able to get our kids there for vacation Bible school, which I thought would be just really cool and fun for the kids. But as it turns out, it, uh, the pastor of this particular church was actually the pastor of my wife when she was born again, back when she was nine years old. And I didn't know about that. She had walked away from the Lord. and, And so that's how we ultimately got together. So there wasn't a lot of that. She then connected again, and and I had connected then with this pastor, and I started finding out things. He would come over and talk with us, and I found out probably more in those particular connections than I had ever known about this Jesus person or, you know, the things about the Bible and what all all that's about. Uh, I... I come from an uh, engineering background, and, and so that's what I was before I became a lawyer. Uh, and so that's, I like to be able to have information that I can analyze and break down. And so that's what I wanted to be able to do. As it turns out, there was this one week uh, revival that the pastor was going to have at his church. And he asked me if I would be willing to go check the guy out. It might be something interesting. Long story short, I was just like, wow, something was drawing me, and I didn't know what it was at the time, but uh, that that is ultimately what happened. 
And in the midst of this, as I was going like, yeah, so I went the first day. Pastor then said, well, what do you think about coming again? And I came the second day. And then uh, uh, third day, I'm really enjoying this. But then, but da dum okay, spoke in the wheel. Okay. I ended up getting uh, another case, and I say another case, of chickenpox. And in this case of chickenpox, it was really bad on me because I had had them before as a child. And so as an adult, uh, it was horrendous on me. And I was just really covered in, in all of these riddled red pox and uh, achy and, and fluish and uh, very high temperature. It was really bad. Well, my wife had come to me and because I'm thinking like, well, I can't go to church. You know, I mean, obviously, I don't want to have anything hurt anybody else. Uh, and uh, so but my wife came to me and she said, baby, can I tell you something? And I said, yeah, honey, what? She said, what if? And I know you don't believe in the devil or anything like that, but what if there really is a devil? And what if he was trying to keep you from going? What would you say to that? And I stopped and I said, well, honey, okay. What if what you're saying is true? What if there really is an enemy? And what if he's really trying to keep me from getting something here because I am really liking this? All right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to find a way I'm going to go. Well, long <laughs> story short, I, I tried to create a, a plan whereby we weren't around anybody or anything else, and, and we were able to go there. And so I did. And as a result of that, uh, during the worship service, we're at the back, we're not a, around anyone. And my wife, I catch her as I'm belting out the song that I can see on the screen in front of me. Our God is an awesome God. And I'm just really feeling something happening in me. I didn't know what it was, but I catch sight out of my, the corner of my eye, my wife, is just a gape. Her mouth is open. She's staring at me. She's like got this look of shock on her face. And I look at her and I say, honey, what is it? And she says, you need to go to the bathroom. And I said, no, I don't. And she said, shakes her head, yes. And she says, yes, you do. And you need to go right now. Well, I didn't know what she was getting at. And so, so I had, I, I thought maybe someone had seen me, you could see all the pox, you know, and that sort of thing. And so she wanted me to find a way to cover myself up. I wasn't sure. So I walk into the bathroom and I'm trying to think to myself, what, what is the problem? And, and I go over to the sink, I put my hands on the sink. I said, just, I don't get it. I was doing so well. And I look in the mirror and I'm talking to myself, right? And I said, just, what is the, whoa. And I look and I'm thinking my eyes are playing tricks on me. And I reach up and slowly pull down this hood on this hoodie that I was covered up with. And I notice all of these pox are gone. And, and I'm thinking like, it's not possible. And I look at my arms and I pull my shirt sleeves up and I undo the front of my shirt and I, and I look at my chest and everything is gone. And I'm thinking suddenly all of these thoughts are going through my head and I'm thinking, I am supposed to be here. I am supposed to be here. <laughs> Denise was right. And I take that hoodie jacket off and I prounce just like a cock chicken and I come back in there and she's got this huge smile on her face. And I, I just yell out real loud, I've been healed. <laughs> and she's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and I knew, Lee, from that moment, something was going to happen. I was supposed to be there. And I was fully expectant. 
Now, how soon after that did you have your heart attack? Well, this was a week later. Uh, ultimately, I ended up going down to the altar. Uh, and the first one down, by the way, I was just like running faster than Elijah in front of the chariots. It was just, <laughs> I was down there. Uh, I, I had gone through all of the prayer and everything else. And ultimately that night I was filled with the Holy Spirit in such a fantastic way. I was lost in the spirit. I was engulfed in this pink mist is the only way that I can explain it. And then uh, uh, apparently as the, the pastor brings me back to reality, I was actually gone in the spirit for four hours and the church was empty. Uh, and it, it was, I, I, it just seemed like a few minutes to me. So anyway, her, uh, the only people there was myself, my wife, the pastor and his wife. The pastor was just sobbing in tears. And she said, Wayne, you've had such an amazing experience, but you have to be careful now. And I'm feeling these waves of love still continuing to just wash over me. And, and I said, okay. And I wasn't sure what she meant. She said, the enemy is going to try and steal what you just got. Okay. Well, one week later, as you say, Lee, I found out exactly what she meant because it was one week later that I died. I can tell you that up to that day, I was on cloud nine. I, I, I was just like, wow, I had been reborn. I, I felt so clean and light and wonderful. I was having this awesome time all the way up until the seventh day. And I should also tell you that this happened. I was actually saved. This experience happened on Halloween night. And so on that night, the enemy lost someone, lost his grip on me. And, uh, and so, but he tried to take me a week later. Well, on that day, I, I actually, I felt suddenly really bad. Uh, I felt fluish and, and just, I, I went downhill. I, I started having a, uh, you know, cold sweats. I, I was having difficulty breathing. Uh, and as it got later, excuse me, I, I started feeling this pain starting to radiate down my left arm. And, and I, I'm just like completely flummoxed as to what could be happening because the, every day before that had been so good. Well, I had told my wife that evening, I need to go to bed and, uh, and, and go to bed early. And she said, well, I'll come in there with you. And I told her, no, you don't need to, baby. She said, no, I want to. And I said, okay, well, you can just come in later. I'm going to go ahead and get in there now. Ultimately, what I did is I go in and lay down. She comes in later and she falls asleep like she had just been inoculated or just like, boom. I had never seen anything like it. It was just so amazing to me. But I was just unable to get comfortable and in such a bad state that I, I couldn't go to sleep. And I ultimately then just tried to be able to get on my back to where I can get some air in me and, and try to figure out what's going on. But suddenly in the midst of all of that, I feel this horrendously sharp pain, bam, just like an elephant stepped in the middle of my chest. And I just, boy, it caught me completely by surprise. And I grabbed onto my chest and I, whoa, you know, and uh, I, I was going to call out to Denise to try to wake her up because I knew this was bad. This was really bad, but I couldn't call out to her. It was like the words are stuck in my throat. And, and so, and, and, and the pain was so bad, I couldn't even move either. It was like it had me pinned in position. And so after struggling there for about a minute or so, and, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't know what to do. And so the only thing that I could think to do at that time is because I couldn't speak is I call out to God in my mind. And I'm saying, God, you got to help me. If you don't help me, I don't know what I'm going to do. Take this pain away. 
And, and just like a, just a couple of seconds after that, then suddenly all the pain went away. And, and now, of course, I had my eyes clenched shut at the time, just trying to be able to deal with this. And I'm just thinking like, wow, everything is, this is, this is so much better now. But more than that, I thought, that's, God was listening to me. That, that is, that's nice. And I felt nice too. It was nothing like all the pain and everything that I was going through. I actually felt good. So I opened my eyes and, and, uh, and then suddenly, you know, we weren't in Kansas anymore. I realized I'm, wow, I wasn't in bed. I'm looking down at the bed and I'm looking at this body on the bed that I recognize as me. And it has this tortured look on the face and the hand still grabbing the chest. And I, I knew it was me and I knew I was dead. And I said that to myself. I said, oh, wow, I'm dead. And then I made this little quip as I'm prone to do sometimes. I said, and I don't look so good either. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that, that was the thing. Uh, and I started having, I, I start noticing around and I'm starting to see things. I, I, I have this like superhero vision and superhero hearing and all these things that I had never noticed before. I could see in the dark. I could zoom in on things. I could, I could just like, wow, focus on things and like instantly. And I'm taking in all of this minute detail. It's like it's just going into this database inside of me. And all with, and I can tell you this, Lee, all of this with complete recall now, because here's the thing about it. I recognize it, it when, you, when you're in your spiritual body, it is so much more superior if you belong to God. I'm going to tell you that. That's going to be the, the key point. But in my instance, what I'm experiencing is something so far superior to my earthly body. And it's able to do things that you could never do here. And one of those is this recall. And uh, some people have, have wondered, you know, like how, you know, it, it, it seems like you know, you know, this is too rehearsed. You couldn't possibly remember every single little detail of this. And that's simply not true. But here's the reason why. Because all of that happened in my spiritual body which bypasses this earthly brain. And so all of that information, I come back into my brain. There's nothing that's going to fade. There's nothing there. It's all in me, but it's outside of this brain. So it's perfect recall. So I get that when I come back in. But as you pointed out, when you, uh, when you read, yes, I, I end up, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I, I hear, then suddenly I hear this voice and it's gently calling out to me saying, Wayne. And I'm thinking like, wow, did somebody just call me? And I hear it again, right? Wayne, but it's a little, little louder now, you know, to kind of catch my attention. And I'm thinking that's what something's happening. And so I turn around where the voice I hear is coming from. And I see, like I say, I've got this superhero vision, so I'm able to see out of this window that's there and in the bedroom that overlooks the street, but I can actually see through the wall too at the same time. And, and so, all, which seems like natural to me, it seems like that, that's, that's the way eyeballs work in the spiritual. I didn't think about that. It seems perfectly normal. And, and I, but here's the thing about this. I recognize this person. There was something inside of me that said, wow, I know this person. I didn't know why or anything else. It was kind of this internal recognition. And I'm thinking to myself, who is this? Who is this? Oh, yeah, this is Linda, right? I didn't think of like, 
who's Linda, right? I, I didn't know. And still to this very day, I don't know who this Linda was. I know I will know, and I know I did know at that time, but here's the point as I understand it. Why don't I know? Because there was one reason and one thing for Linda to do, and that was to point me up. And, uh, and that's what she did because here's the most important part of this story. As I go out there, she tells me, I'm saying hi, she says hi. And then uh, Wayne, there's someone who wants to meet you. I say, really, who? And she just looks up slowly and I look up too to try to figure out what she's looking at. And I see this, this what I think is a star up in the night sky. And that's all I can see, right? This little pinpoint of light way, way out there, I'm thinking. And as I'm contemplating the star, then suddenly I feel what feels like these big, huge hands that so big, it takes the entire center of me, reaches around me and grabs me gently, but firmly and starts to lift me up. And it, it, it wasn't bad, it actually, it felt good. It, it, it was very comforting and, and I'm thinking like, but it caught me off guard because I didn't see the hands and who, who it's connected to, right? I know their hands, but just like you pick up a little child and you, and you look at your little child, you know, when you pick it up, that's the feeling I have at the time. And, and but like I said, because I'm still thinking like, whoa, I got to throw my hands out to try to steady myself, to grab onto something, which is silly because there was actually, there's nothing around me, right, to do that. But because I did that, I caught sight of my arm, my left hand as I'm, I'm looking at it and, and this laser vision focuses in, I'm thinking like, Wow, I hadn't noticed this about myself. And what it is, I can see this glow, this purplish, bluish color of light that's coming out from inside of this body of mine, which is, looks like, it's shaped like me, it's me. And, but, but it's, it's coming out of inside of me. And I can, then the, this laser vision, whoosh, zooms in and I can actually see the veins and everything inside of this hand because it's transparent, it's translucent. And uh, it's light going through the veins. It's not blood, it's light. And, and this light is coming out of the veins and you can see it like glowing outside. And I think to myself, oh wow, that's really cool. Why, why not, right? And as soon as I look at that, I think to try to re recalibrate and relook at, you know, what is this? What is this? And then I go back to, you know, I'm being lifted up and, I, and I'm looking down and I notice that Linda is going away from me as I'm being lifted up. And, and then I notice my feet. I, I, I notice all these things. I'm thinking like, wow, I've got shoes on. And I, I just thought it was very strange because I'd just been in my bedroom. I'd been in bed asleep. And so where would these shoes have come from? I didn't know. Now, here's all of these different thoughts that are going through my head, these observations and things, Lee. But here's another thing, and it's another one of these superpowers that you have. Every single moment, every split second of it, this is happening in almost simultaneous amounts of time. It's happening so fast that you can't separate the seconds from it. And, uh, and so while it takes longer for me to kind of tell you about it, all of it is happening like zoom, so super fast that if you were to actually see it, it would wow, it would be just like that, right? Uh, and, uh, and so I'm looking at that and I then suddenly turn my attention. I, I just kind of like, wow, okay, let's go for the ride, right? Let's see what's happening. 
and I look up to see the direction that I'm going. And as these hands continue to lift me up, I'm, I'm looking around and I'm taking in the whole environment. As the, the, the land is going away from me, as I'm going up through the clouds and I go out into space and you can kind of see the earth as it's going away from you. And then I turn full attention out into space where I'm heading. I don't know where I'm heading, but I'm heading out there somewhere. And as I get deep out into space, then like a portal, for lack of a better term, opens up. I, I, I remember, and this is, of course, years later, but uh, there was a, um, uh, a, a series on television called uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And they have these wormholes that kind of open up and go, whoosh, you know, opens up like that. And I'm thinking like, yeah, that's a lot like what I saw. This thing opens out and it's in the shape of a funnel. And, 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 and it goes up and it makes this uh, tunnel that you can see it and I'm heading right for it. And I'm still seeing this pinpoint of light that's at the end of this tunnel, wherever that is, but it's still a long ways away. And then ultimately I end up going up into this tunnel. Well, as I'm in this tunnel, all of these other things are happening all around oh my goodness this was just so all around this tunnel the circumference of the tunnel on the inside of it all around are angels now i recognize that they are angels i i don't know why it, it's not like i knew anything about angels as you point out i had only been saved for one week i knew nothing about angels but inside of me i knew that's what they were and and they're they're dressed in this this kind of um, deep blue metallic form fitting military like armor, um, and and it's engraved with th this deep engravement and, and stuff on it, and and they're all handsome looking male figures and. They have wings. So if that's going to, you know, concern people, they're going to hear. People. Look, I'm just telling you what I saw, what I experienced. So they all have wings now, but they're not outstretched. They're all folded up against them. And they're all like shoulder to shoulder, making this huge, long passage of these angels, which resembled to me like the experience you have with a saber arch. If you're familiar with what a military saber arch is, and then it, you can see what I experienced. And I looked at it like it was a, a wedding type of, type of experience. And they, I could understand what was happening from them. They were like happy to be there. They were happy to see me. And I'm thinking like, Wow, they're happy to see me. I was just so amazed by that. And they're kind of chattering amongst themselves, like, like yeah, you know, like, it's so good to be here. And, uh, uh, and I'm going up through there and I'm feeling this breeze, this warm, comforting breeze that it's not like it's on your face it's going completely through me it's and it's amazing it's amazing just like you would the, the best vacation you've ever been on in a tropical environment you feel this it's so nice and i'm going through there well what's happening is i'm starting to speed up and speed up and i'm going so fastly I'm going so fast and going up faster and faster until I recognize that I'm actually going faster than the speed of light. And, and my engineering human mind kicks in and I'm going like, wait a minute, you can't do that. That's breaking the law, right? The speed of light, the speed of light, that's the fast you can go. And so, so I'm thinking like, but 
wait, I know I'm going faster and I'm starting to get uncomfortable with it. And, but as soon as I feel this discomfort, then I feel that I'm slowing down just a little bit, not, not too much, but just enough where I feel like, okay, I, I can deal with this, right? That kind of speed. And I'm continuing and I'm focusing now almost completely intently on the uh, light that is now growing in my field of vision in front of me. Uh, I can see outside the, this tunnel, which is kind of translucent itself. And even though it's covered in all of these angels, there's little kind of spaces behind, you know, between them, between their shoulders and necks and heads and legs and everything. And so I can see, because we're still in space and all of these galaxies and planets and things are just streaking by because I'm going so fast. But none of that compares to what I'm now seeing. This light is growing and it's, it's getting brighter and brighter. And as I get closer and closer to it, I can see now and make out that, that there is another, another tunnel shape that comes out into this kind of different realm. It's, it's like a completely different space, a portal that goes off into some other place. And, uh, and this star that I still think it is, right, is, is located there. Uh, and, but I, it, so I can look there and I can see this different space. And I can look to my left and my right, and I can still see the space that I'm in, right? So there's like this boundary covering this uh, exit of this tunnel. Well, as I get so close, I burst through like a like being born into or or, or fireworks exploding or you know get, you know uh, coming through some type of membrane that just broke and I'm going to pop into this realm of light and I'm I'm just like wow all oh, this awe of this beauty that I'm seeing and I'm still heading towards this star well suddenly the clarity and the beauty of everything that I'm seeing is, is just not comparable to where I was. It is so pure and bright and, and clean and uh, perfect, I can for, <laughs> just for lack of a better term. And I suddenly this light has just overtaken my vision. And when I say brighter than 10,000 suns, that's exactly the term that comes to me. And you think, How's, how, could, how could that be possible? How, how could you do that? It was that. If you could imagine that that is possible, it is possible. And that there was more to this light, Lee. I, this light is palpable. You can feel it. It, it's um, it, and it's I I recognize that the light is alive. It has a life to it all by itself. And I'm still heading straight head first, right, straight for this light. And as I'm looking down into it, and I can see, like I said, I've got this superhero vision. The brightness of it doesn't hurt me and doesn't keep me from recognizing things. I can still see it, and I'm looking down into this light, <clears throat> and I make out the form of a man down in the center of this light, and I'm awestruck by that because, wait a minute, I can see this man, and it's, it, I can, it's the form of a man because I can't make out the features like eyes, nose, mouth, but 
it's it's the shape of a man I'm, and arms are outstretched towards me. Just like, you know, uh, when you've seen a family member you haven't seen in so long and you just want to reach out and hug you, right? That's what he was doing towards me. And at that moment, I truly entered this light. I went through this boundary layer. I entered into him. And at that same exact moment, as I enter into him, the light also enters me. And, and at that moment, I don't know what to say. It's like, that's when union occurred for me. That's when union occurred. And I had instant knowledge at that moment when that happened, that this was Jesus. This was God. This is the way, the truth, and the life. And I, I knew that. I knew it was true. It was unquestionably true. There was no doubt. There was no way to say, oh, yeah, no, no, not true. Maybe. No, you could not deny it. There is honestly an absolute truth. And his name is Jesus. I'm telling you that right now. That's what I'm, I didn't even know because I was so new. I'd only been saved for one week. I'd only known about Jesus for a week. So I didn't know that this was a scripture. And, but that came to me and I knew it was absolutely true. My goodness. I'm then being filled because as this knowledge is coming into me, I'm being filled up like an empty glass, filled up with this light, with this love of God. And, and I'll say light and love. You can't separate the two. The two are the same. The light in the love are the same. And we know from John now, and I know that now, where it says that God is light. And he also says God is love. So you go like, well, wait a minute. Is God love or light? Yes, that's, that's the answer. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you about this love of God, Lee. My goodness. I have never experienced and I will never experience. And I look forward to experiencing again this infinite love of God. Now, so this is the way this works. I, as I'm being filled up, filled up, there's actually a palpable pressure to this. And it's filling me up from the inside out. And I'm expanding my spiritual self is actually expanding with this love of God. And this love of God was beyond words. I like to say, if, if we want to be able to look at the love of God, this love of Jesus, Jesus as God the Son, and we're experiencing this love of God like uh, a faceted diamond and you've got all of these different facets and you were to shine light out of these. You've got all of these different facets of light coming out. And so one facet might be shining out rapture. One facet might be shining out joy. One facet might be shining out just, uh, uh, just anything, just, oh my goodness, there, there are so many terms that, that we have for it and so many terms for love that, that, we can, uh, that we can say, but obviously the highest form of that is this agape love, this unconditional love that we have from God. But it's all that and more. So where we experience friendship 
here on earth, where we experience uh, erotic love with your, with your spouse, where you experience, uh, you, you know, familial love for your, for your uh, uh, mother or father or for your children, those types of things. Let's wrap all of this up in one package. And then if we were to say that I was able to experience the perfect example of that on earth of every single one of those facets of love, and then multiply that times a billion with a B, and then that is going to be just the very beginning of the love of God, because he is infinite. And so he's filling me up with this love, and, and I am just enraptured with it all. And, and, and he's filling me up, filling me up, filling me up, and I feel like I'm going to explode from the very power of it. And as soon as I have this thought in my mind, I feel that he starts to ease up and stop filling me, right? And, and as soon as he did that, my eyes got real white. I'm like, no, don't stop. Give me all you got. And at that moment, I hear Jesus chuckle. And I get this thought, okay. And he starts filling me up more and more and fills me up until he knows that it's as much love that I can take. And I want to be able to say, so this is why, why we cannot leave. We cannot experience that level of love in these earthly bodies. So we want, when, uh, when the Apostle Paul tells us that life here is like a shadow, it really is. These are all symbols of a life beyond in that spiritual world that is beyond anything we can imagine or express in terms that we understand here on earth. So that's why we want to be able to say, wait a minute, wow, okay, do you understand what love is? Well, yes, we understand it based upon what we've experienced in our relationships and things on earth. But we want to look to God, who is that perfect example. And here I am experiencing that and understanding that. So ultimately, as a sidebar, I know now that's why he sent me back to be able to try to explain that, to, to get people to understand, especially in these last days, because he's coming back for those people who want that love with him, who accept that love with him and want that for all eternity. So that's what happens. So he's, I'm, I'm experiencing this love. I am, my goodness, I can't tell you just how, how much I, I'm just reveling in this and, and, and I'm starting to ask questions and questions. This is so amazing. This is so amazing to me. And I'm asking questions and questions and questions, and I'm wanting to find out more about Jesus. I want to find out more about him. And so all of these questions that I'm asking about him, he's answering. And he's answering them in completeness. Uh, not like here we are on earth. We have to read books. We read line per line, precept upon precept, right? But that's what we do in our physical mind. We've got this linear approach, but that does not happen in this spiritual world. There's nothing stopping you from getting a complete answer all in an instant. And he's filling me up with these answers. And I'm asking more questions and more questions. And he chuckles again. He was so amused at that because he was amused because he knew I wanted to know him. And all of these questions were, were just that. I want to know you. I, I was so thirsty. I had been searching my whole life for this, 
for this and now. Oh, yes, give it to me, give it to me. I was just so excited beyond words. And then I had this thought, Lee. I'm thinking, all of these things about you, they're, they're true. Everything written about you, your word is true. And, and, I, and I'm thinking like, so this is where it all culminates to. Every question that I asked, every answer that I got, all of it relates to one thing. And the answer always culminates in one person. And that is Jesus. He is the answer truly to it all. Every symbolic thing that we experience on this earth, everything that we experience in this earthly life is symbolic of and points to him. That's what I got from it. And I knew that was true. And so I said to myself, so that means that everything said about the cross, that's true too. And in that instant when I said that, I was transported through time and space to that moment where Jesus was actually being crucified on the cross. And I'm standing there. I can see everything around me. I, I'm, I'm there. I'm actually experiencing this. And I'm stunned at just the, the horrible torture that I can see that this man in front of me is going through. It's not this pristine, you know, character that they show on the cross. He's all clean and everything. No, it was nothing like that. He was badly tortured. But I I was looking beyond that and I'm sitting here awed by what I'm seeing, but I'm not only awed by that because I'm not just able to see what's going on. I can hear his thoughts. And his thoughts right there. As I'm looking at him on the cross. It was for me. And I knew that I knew I had this just suddenly some like a dam burst inside of me. And I knew I can hear it from him that if I'm the only one, if I'm the only one in all of creation, the only human that ever would have ultimately said yes to him, he would have gone to that cross. Just for me, Lee, just for me. He would have done just what he's doing right now, just for me. And I knew it was the truth, and I was utterly broken into powder. And I just fell to my knees right there. It was so humbling to know that that was the truth of it all. And, uh, and it was the truth. And it was also the truth that he feels the same way about each and every one of his people, each and every one. And he can do that. He's an infinite God. He doesn't lose anything from himself. He wants that personal relationship, that intimacy, as if you are just him and you. And I... I, I, oh my goodness, I would, I asked then even more questions and more questions and more questions. And he just filled me up with libraries full of information. None, I, I couldn't come back with all of that. I, I recognize, of course, that, that he gave me all of that. He was willing to, willingly gave it all to me. But I, I say that I was not able to come back with that. Sorry not able to come back with all that information. But really, it's not that I wasn't able to because he didn't allow me to. It's because just like our brains are only able to hold so much, I wasn't able to come back. These physical brains, this physical body could not contain all of that. 
it's still in my spiritual body, but I couldn't come back with it. The other, the, the important things that I did have are just what I'm telling you now. He wanted me to focus on that. And I'm thinking, like, my goodness, this, this place is so wonderful. This, this is so amazing. But something just kind of like triggered in the back of my mind. Am I going to be able to stay here? And so I then asked, can I stay? And I should point out that I had recognized that I'm not just there with Jesus. I recognized that there, seated beside Jesus, is the Father. Now, okay, so I've got to clarify. I know the Father is there. I cannot see a physical form. I'm, I just have this knowledge. I, I have this knowledge. There he is. I know there's this outline of him there, but I can't see any, anything there, uh, even in my spiritual body. Uh, and I know that those are the hands that lifted me up. I, I can't see him, but he's there. And here I can interact with him. I can speak with him. I just can't see him. I can see Jesus. He's right here in front of me as well. And the funny thing about it is when you look at him, I'm thinking like, so the father is seated there. And as I look at it, I look around Here's Jesus at the right hand of the Father. Ah, I get it. I get it. But he really was. He really was right there. And they were like almost connected. And this is how they are one. So when I asked, can I stay? Then in one voice, they both answer me in unison, no. And so I hear Jesus in his no, and then I hear the Father in his no. Now, let me tell you, they're both, because it's, it's a very loving no. It's firm. I'm not going to be able to stay, but it's all with this love permeating it. That being said, the voice of the father would crack rocks, would just tumble mountains. It, it was just so incredibly powerful that it shook the very core of my being in me. And if it wasn't for the fact that I knew that the father's love was so strong in me, it would have filled me with fear beyond my ability to contain it. But because of this power, but it wasn't that at all. Yes, it's, it's this huge power. It, it's like he could whisper and create galaxies. It, it was that powerful. But a loving no. And I knew at that moment, Lee, that I wasn't going to be able to stay. And as soon as that recognition hit me, I start to go backwards and I am as disappointed as I was. And I'm going, no, 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 you know, just like a little kid, no, no, no. And, uh, and so I'm being pulled back and I'm separated out of the light. And I can feel the separation of just, and, and oh, oh my goodness, you know, I, I'm not wanting to do that, but I know I have to go back. And I look down and I can see back behind me, I can see the opening of this uh, funnel that I came up in. And I'm now going feet first, just opposite of the way I came in head first. And I kind of roll myself over, almost like I'm on a ski sled, right? Uh, <clears throat> and so I'm watching myself go feet first. And I enter in through this membrane back into this earthly space. And 
all of these angels are still there. They're all still surrounded and they're all just as happy to be able to see me. But of course, right now, what's happening to me is my heart is I'm, I'm just, I don't want to be able to go back. I, I just, I'm already missing it. I'm already homesick, but I'm going through, they're happy. And as I come out on the other side, ultimately, and I go through the same thing through space, past galaxies, into our solar system, and, and then encounter Earth as this beauty, in this, through these spiritual eyes that, that had a beauty that you just can't put in pictures. It, it was stunning. And I thought, wow. And, and there was a, a thought that struck me. This is beautiful to God. This, this is that beauty. I, I can see, you know, there's this. And I'm thinking like, wow, I'd always wanted to see something, see like this through these eyes. I've never had any idea that I would be doing it this way. But this was just beautiful. And I'm all the time heading back towards it. I end up going through all the cloud layers. I, I see then, of course, the North America and everything as I'm heading back towards Texas. And, uh, and then ultimately, as I'm coming through, I'm seeing everything. And then as I get over where we are, I can see Linda still seated, looking still up. And she's watching me come in, but I don't come down beside her. I'm actually coming over the house. And as I come in, I am focusing on the house and still remember everything. It's, it's not just like we're just driving through the countryside here. This is very, very fast. And, um, and so, but I'm still having this superhero vision. So I'm still able to see all of these details and they're still emblazoned in my memory. And that's just going through the shingled roof and that's seeing all of the, you know, the wood structure inside the ceiling and uh, going through the, the pink insulation and in through the top of the ceiling. I, I could see all of this, it's just like, and then as I come through, I then, of course, notice my body still on the bed, still the same way. Denise is still there. She's still asleep. And I come in and my feet actually come in through my chest. And that's where I make contact. Well, I'm coming in so fast. And with, it's almost like a bullet when it impacts something. And so when my spirit, my soul, the me, that's the spiritual me, actually connects and locks into this physical body, then what happens then is there is what I call like this rebound effect. You know, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's the way I'm thinking about it. And so I would just like slam into my body so hard, locked in through over the end of the bed. My body is catapulted in the air out into the center of our bedroom. And I land with my chest, bam, onto the floor. And that's what finally woke Denise up. She hears this crash thud out in the center of the floor. And she's waking up with a start. Well, instantly, there are several things that happen to me because I'm suddenly back in pain again. And it's a different pain, though. It's this aching, burning pain. It's not the pain that I experienced when I first died. It's this, you know, like when you get a burn it's as it's trying to heal. It's that kind of thing. But I'm still not able to speak yet. I, I'm just I'm weak and I'm trying to get these things out and I'm just trying to drag myself on the floor, turn myself around. And I'm thinking to myself, if I, I've got to get her attention. And so I'm, I'm thinking like, if I can just 
grab her foot on the bed so she knows it's me. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I scared the daylights out of her. I didn't mean to do that, but I couldn't think of anything else to be able to, to do that. And so I crawl up and I reach up on the end of the bed, across the end of the bed, and I grab her foot. Well, sure enough, it just shocks the daylights out of her. And she lets out this, <gasps> and, and she looks over at me and then she's, she says, Wayne. And I'm forcing out what is the most important thing that I can say to her in that moment. I just met God. And she, she's just, what? And I'm thinking like, did she not hear me? And so I force it out again. I just met God. And then I, that was all the strength I had left in me, Lee, and I just collapsed. <laughs> onto the floor and uh and that was the end she she then of course she gets up immediately runs over around to me and gets beside me and i spent uh the next amount of time going into deep detail and explaining to her the first person that i come into contact with everything that happened just like i'm still explaining today still letting people know about the love of God and still letting them know he wants them to know that. And so that's really it. And I will end with, he's going to be coming back for those people very, very soon now. Wow. That's an amazing story, Wayne. That's, an, that's incredible. Um, Wayne, if uh, I know you have some other videos, uh, why not tell tell our listeners how they can um, s learn more about you and 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 what you've uh, learned from this experience? Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. It's called "We Are the Overcomers." <clears throat> Excuse me. And I have a number of uh, videos there. You, if, if you want to see and find out more, uh, maybe some more detail about my uh, near-death experience, uh, as well as what happened then after this, which is, I think, quite exciting as well. Or you want a full, uh, a, a full just a narration of, of, of what my salvation experience was like and how that went, you can go there and find that out. Um, I also have a, um, a Gmail account. So I, I have a number of people that have wanted to, to contact me that have questions and that sort of thing. And I do my best to try to be able to answer them. And you can get in touch with me at Wayne Fowler, NDE, that's for near death experience, Wayne Fowler, NDE at gmail.com. And so if you have questions or you, you would like more after you've uh, looked at my videos, then I'm happy to do all I can. Now, I get a lot of contacts, so please bear with me and give me time. But I do try to respond to all of them. Um, and, uh, and, that's, that, and I do encourage you, especially now, because... Uh, Honestly, I, I want everyone to understand if, if you get nothing else out of this, if you have questions, here is the ultimate synopsis of it all. God is real. Jesus, the son of God, he is real. Jesus is God. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And he is true. Everything written about him is true. And, and just because you've got people that want to be able to say, well, okay, there's mistranslations or things like that. Do you think that God doesn't have the power to be able to say what he wants to say? Yes, he does. 
Everything in that book is true. It's just understanding about the level of truth it really is trying to convey. It has so many levels to it. Uh, I, I want you to know also that his love is infinite and he wants to share that intimate personal relationship with you forever. And you can say yes to him to do that. And he's coming back for those people that do. Yeah. Wayne, thanks so much for sharing your experiences with us and, and how they changed you. Listeners can also leave comments for you where this show appears on our YouTube channel at NDE Radio with Lee Whitting. And if listeners would like to hear this show again or any of our more than 450 archived ad-free NDE interviews, go to TalkStone's NDE Radio site and hit the Past Shows button, or go to our YouTube channel, NDE Radio with Lee Whitting, where you can subscribe to and comment on the complete NDE Radio library. And be sure to check out our NDE Radio Facebook page. Just search NDE Radio with Lee Whitting on your Facebook app. And listen again next Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern at Talk Zone for more NDE Radio. I'm your host, Lee Whitting, saying thanks for listening.